Hey everyone, welcome to Meeple Bits. Thanks for joining me for this setup and how to for the game Seven Wonders Architects. A game for two to seven players with a playtime of about 25 minutes. We're gonna go ahead and tackle laying it out, setting it up, walking through the, uh, the game, and it plays much like the other variants of Seven Wonders. You're drafted and you're set collecting, you're going to battle, you're learning science, you're scoring up points. So join me as we go ahead and dive right into this one. Hey everyone, welcome to a setup and for the game Seven Wonders Architects. To begin play, take the neutral pieces tray out of the box, getting it ready for uh, distribution. Then have all players select or be randomly given a wonder tray of their choosing, and then all players should shuffle the deck within their tray. All wonders have five tiers to them, and you should have uh, by now placed the stickers on the cover of the trays so that everyone can easily identify what is the power of their wonder. Next, have make sure that each player shuffles their individual deck. Make sure the neutral deck is shuffled, leaving some space for a discard pile. Take all the progress tokens, shuffle them and put them into a stack, and then draw up the top three progress tokens, putting them into the center for all players. Next, determine your player count in accordance to the rules and choose that number of conflict tokens. In a two or three player game, we're going to select three conflict tokens. In a four player game, it'll be four. In a five, it'll be five. And in a six or seven, you will have six uh, conflict tokens. And lastly, take the, uh, the, the cat and make sure it's on its standee, getting it ready for selection. Here are the different types of cards that are going to come out during the course of play. You have your resource cards in gray, your gold coin cards in yellow or gold, your science cards in green, your civic cards in blue, and your military cards in red. The military cards and the civic cards come in two different types. They will either, the civic cards will either have a cat or it will have no cat. The military cards will either have a horn or it will not have a horn. And that will sort of determine what additionally will happen. In the course of the cat, the player that uh, plays this card will take the cat into their hand for their, for their use next turn. Whenever there is a horn, then that's going to cause a conflict token to be flipped from the peace side to the conflict side. So that is the type of cards that are going to come out, and each of them will serve a purpose. Example, you'll notice here that when billing Halicarnassus, Halicarnassus the first tier takes two resources that are not equal. The second tier takes two resources that are identical. So what that means is here, I could either take gray resources uh, of the same type to match the, or sorry, these two, if they were in my hand, then I could play them and I must play them when I have them to build the first tier of my wonder. A gold acts as a wild card resource, whether it's identical to match or different if that's the case. For the science cards, when you have two identical or three unique, then you must take a progress token, one of the green tokens that are displayed. So when taking those science, you can choose from the three that should be face up or the top one of this pile that is face down as a sort of random uh, progress token of your choice. On your turn, at the start of your turn, if you are the owner of the cat pawn, you may choose to look at the top card of any of the three decks that you're going to choose from. Only the player that has this token at the start of their turn may use its power. And lastly, once you've flipped all the uh, conflict tokens from their peace side over to their conflict side, then you're going to stop the turn and resolve combat. How you resolve combat is, of course, looking at the military that each player has in front of them, and the winners will receive uh, victory tokens, and the losers basically get nothing. Then, once it is resolved, you're going to flip back over all the conflict tokens to their peace side, and all players that have a military with a horn must discard that to the discard pile. 
if you have a card that has no horn on it, you keep that in your hand uh, in perpetuity throughout the game. So that covers essentially the types of cards, what they do, and now we need to go into what a do what to do on your turn. So once you're ready to begin play, have all players uh, create their wonders on the scaffolding side face up, which will also indicate the requirements to build each tier. Remember, all tiers have, or sorry, all wonders have five tiers. Have them shuffle their deck and set their deck to their left between them and the player to their left. So this person would have their deck sort of like off over here, and this person, if this were over there. Then on a player's turn, you're going to do, well, going, then going in clockwise order, you're going to do one of three things. You're going to pull from the deck on your left, which should be your own deck. The deck on the right, which should be your opponent's deck. Or the neutral deck from the center of the table. When selecting a card, simply play it face up in front of you. So on purple's turn, so and then once you've selected the card, uh, it will trigger subsequent actions, whether that be matching or unmet or getting the resources necessary to flip your wonder tiers, science tokens to collect those progress tokens, or military to possibly flip the conflict uh, tokens. So on purple's turn, let's say they wanted a first pull from the neutral deck. The first card up is a resource card, so they will take that and just place it in front of them into uh, their play area. Then moving in clockwise order, it's going to go to orange player's turn. And let's say, for example, they wanted to pull from purple's deck. Because again, they can pull from their left, their right, which would be purple player, or the neutral. So they pulled a science card, placing that up face up in front of them. Now, because they only have one, they don't yet get to take a progress token. Then orange player is going to draw from their own deck, also drawing a science card, playing it face up in front of them. Moving along back to um, neutral player or purple player, they're going to pull from their own deck, pulling a science card. And again, same thing. They're going to play it face up in front of them. And then players are going to continue around the board until they meet a criteria once drawing a card. So this player is going to now draw from their own deck. Now that they have two identical science cards in their hand, they're going to draw one of these three or the face up. Please refer to the rule book for any description on the science tokens. So let's say, for example, they wanted to pull this one into their play. You'll take that, replacing that science token, leaving that for the next player, and discarding any of these cards that met the criteria. Then orange player is going to go and they're going to pull from the neutral deck. Now they've received a science token, but because it's too uh, ununique, so they're, they're mat not matching, they'll need a third one to complete the set there. Back over here to purple player, they're going to draw from the center, giving them a military card. This military card has a horn, so it will flip a conflict token. Continuing on, this player will draw from the center, giving them one of the blue buildings, and they will take the cat into their hand. The cat on the player with the cat on their turn may look at the top card of the central deck to determine if that's really what they what they want to take. So blue or sorry, orange player's done their turn. So red player now orange player. They're going to draw also from central deck, giving them a gold which acts as a wild card resource. Back to purple player again. Let's do central deck. They now have two resources that are not unique. So they will immediately build this tier of their wonder, flipping it over and discarding the cards to the discard pile. And play will continue until the first player to complete their uh, wonder ends the game. Then all players will tally up their victory points and the player with the most victory points wins. You're going to check the points from your wonder, points from any science tokens, points from blue cards, etc. So going through all of that will determine who then is the victor. Just because you build your wonder does not necessarily mean that you are the victor. Additionally, you'll notice that uh, red player over here has three things in a row. What will happen in those cases is whenever you meet any of those criteria, then that is the tier that must be flipped. Example, once orange player, or sorry, red player has two 
equal cards, so two cards of the same value resources, they must flip this tier. If they then had three that were not the same, then they would flip this tier. So whichever one of those conditions are first met, it must be completed. Additionally, you cannot skip ahead a tier until the previous tier is complete. And because this player has three things on a single tier, all three of them must be completed before this one gets flipped. Which means that if they had two of these completed and they happened to have four, or these two were completed, and they had four that were not equal, they could not yet flip this one because they must meet the two equal requirements. So that's going to do it for this one, guys. I'm going to go ahead and tear down the table and stay tuned while I bring you guys my afterthoughts. Hey, everyone. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that setup and how-to for the game Seven Wonders Architects. So diving straight into my afterthoughts, the first thing on this one that I really want to tackle is the insert. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for putting a place for all the pieces, making it easy to not only select which wonder you're going to be building towards, but keeping everything where it belongs. So I hope the designers of this one really take note and for any you know, reprints or future prints of, of any of their Seven Wonders games, whether that be Duel or the core Seven Wonders game, please, for all that is good in this world, Take a reference from the playbook that you guys use for this one and put an insert in your games. So thank you for doing that to this one. It really makes the game much better for setup, teardown, and organization. So that kind of tackles the components aspect. So diving into really the game itself, one thing that I want to be clear about is that more experienced players may not have an appreciation for the nuances or the steep learning curve that Seven Wonders actually does present. Now, I'm talking about Seven Wonders sort of vanilla here. So Seven Wonders Architects really does streamline the game of Seven Wonders even further, giving you really just three things to do on your turn. Am I taking from my pile, my, my opponent's pile, or the center pile? That's it. It, it really just makes the decision-making that much easier. It pulls out the need for uh, specific resources and things like that. So again, it, I don't want to say dumbs it down, but it streamlines it a little bit more so that, again, once you meet the criteria for building a tier of your wonder as you're building up the architect, it just, it's just <laughs> easier, just easier. So many of us have played Seven Wonders many times before, so we can probably get closer to the time on the box, which I think is 30, 35 minutes for a game of Seven Wonders, depending on the play count. And even at higher plays, you can probably get it done in about that time anyway. But if you're introducing one or two new people to the dynamics of Seven Wonders Vanilla, Seven Wonders Architects is going to be much friendlier to those types of people because, again, there is a curve. So I do appreciate the designers for bringing this one uh, to market and just streamlining a game that, in probably my opinion and many others, isn't that difficult but does have a steep curve. So why is Seven Wonders Architect a game you may want to add into your collection? Well, it plays in the time that it says or less. It's easy to learn, understand, play, get uh, players from really any age uh, into it. And I think the box uh, has it as, yeah, eight plus. Now, I haven't played it with someone that young yet, so I, I, can't, really, I can't really say either way, but uh, playing it, I, I can say that, yeah, it would be that simple for someone of that age group even. Um, why is a why is Seven Wonders Architects a game that you may not want to add into your collection? Well, for all the reasons that I've sort of just laid out here, because Seven Wonders does add more depth, more complexity, uh, a little bit more strategy, and some take that, especially as you draft the cards over to yourself. So if you want something that is more complex, that has more weight and meat on it, so to speak, then Architects isn't going to be for you. But if you do enjoy that entry style game that gives you the introduction to the greater Seven Wonders universe, then Architects is absolutely for you. 
So if you have any questions about architects, uh, please leave a comment down below. I'm happy to answer them. Um, tell me what your thoughts on this one was uh, versus the others. Did you try it with someone new or was it a table of experienced players? We played this one uh, with both types of groups. Uh, one where we introduced some new players into who has never played Seven Wonders Vanilla and uh, a group where all of us had played Seven Wonders before. So we were able to uh, blow through this one in like 20 minutes. So plays it plays great. And we were able to just, again, churn it out. It, it's almost in even a, a filler game category for me. But please leave a comment down below. If you've enjoyed the video and you like the content, I do appreciate the support. So feel free to leave a like and subscribe. And as always, everyone, until next time, thanks so much for watching.